well. Awesome. So I'm so excited. Uh, Whitney, welcome to Business Spotlight. Thank you. I'm just so excited to have this. I'm and excited to be here. And interestingly, you and I just hopped on. I told you who I talked to. I talked to Ben earlier, like, oh, I know Ben. I'm like, what a small world. <laughs> Minneapolis is small. It's yeah. true. And, and yet it sometimes doesn't feel like it. Sometimes it feels like we are in silos and feel like, mm. especially a lot of the business um, owners feel like we're on our own behind our Zoom trying to make it all work. Yeah, you're right. And this is what we're trying to do here to connect us. So people are going to be very excited to hear from you. So you are you wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about this conversation because it's about one of my favorite topics, which is money. Uh, but you are an investment advisor to um, high net worth individuals, companies, CEOs, and you really spend a significant amount of time um, helping people really, you know, talk about their money stories and their values. So it's not just what you mentioned earlier, money is just a tool. Correct. Which is a great statement, but for most people, like, what do you mean money is the tool? Money is like this emotional gun. Totally. Um, so tell me how you got started and why work specifically in the bin in the business sector? Sure. So I, I got into it by accident. Um, <laughs> it was straight out of college that I started in the industry. So um, that was 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I got recruited by Ameriprise. I checked the box on Monster Financial Advisor. I didn't really know what it meant. I thought maybe it was a money coach. You know, I thought I was good with my money. I could teach people how to budget. And I had no idea all the different tests that I would have to do, selling investments, insurance. You know, I had, hadn't a clue. Um, but I had, I've worked since I was 14 years old and I did a lot of customer facing mm -hmm. service jobs, um, phone sales. I had done all of that before I really start graduated college. So here's my cat in the background, oh, yeah. my coworker. Um, and so that, uh, is how I got started. But like I said, totally by accident, not something that I had planned on or went to school for, um, Ameriprise actually does on the job training and licensing. So they, that was a really good place to start because you got paid very little, um, but you got paid to study and pass your tests and make phone calls for other advisors. And so it was a really great place to start. You worked with a book of business of clients that were actually dumped by their previous advisors. And so it was actually kind of good because we had to overcome a lot of objections and really build relationship with people. Um, and I still have clients. I've moved um, investment platforms twice, and I still have many of my best clients are with me from when I started at Ameriprise. Are you serious? Isn't this mm -hmm. such, a, such a beautiful co like continuity, rather? Yes. And yes. this is so incredible. Well, um, you, you named your company Whitney Wealth Group. This is true. Yeah, I really, I love the sound of it because it is just, it feels very exclusive. It feels very like, I want to be part of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please come on in? So, uh, you know, what is what does it look like to work with you? Because you do specialize working with uh, executives, CEOs, yep. uh, mid-level um, uh, entrepreneurs. You know, what, what does it look like? Why do people come to you in the first place? And then, you know, what is the journey that you take? Through. Yeah, so it's interesting um, because a lot of the people that I come that come to me, you know, they make good money about they make, let's just call it over 150,000 of income, or they have over 200,000 of assets typically is who works with me. But even so those are wealthy people, you know, in if we look at the world, mm -hmm. right, those are wealthy people. Yep. So I look like globally, right? I don't look at just America. I don't want to work with the top 1% in America. Honestly, I really don't. I want to work with the mass affluent, right? The people who have enough money to make a good life for themselves, but are still humble. And so um, they come to me and they've oftentimes worked with financial planners or financial advisors before. And the issue that they've had is that the financial advisor doesn't really hear them. Right. So they just say, come to them. Oh, here's how you should allocate your money. Oh, you want to retire at 65. That's just the conversation. And they don't really 
talk to them about what are your money fears? What are you really, what's your purpose? Why are you here? Um, wh what, how was money discussed when you were a child? Mm -hmm. How did you get to where you are? So we really want to go on a journey with people. And this is something that I'm personally really proud of. A lot of my clients, both wealthy, you know, the top client all the way to the bottom tier of clients, they've said, you know, I don't feel judged. Um, you know, there's such a stigma and shame around money, and we really want to remove that shame and fear that people have. And that's pretty unique to us. It really is. Why do you think that we have such money stigma or money oh. issues? And it seems like they all stem from childhood. Money doesn't grow on trees. It you sure does. That, right? So is it that thing that has been passed down? Or do you think that it's, we're still being conditioned by society? Yes and yes. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be exclusive to one or another. But I would tell you that just like all of our other emotional issues and behaviors come from childhood. Same with money. Why would money be any different, right? And so there's a woman that I um, work with sometimes. She has a money archetype assessment that sometimes I'll have my clients take. Her name is Mary Schmidt. And she always says this, is uh, an eight-year-old running your money, running your finances, Ooh, right? Like, powerful. and right. So we, by the time we're seven, we've already had a lot of our behaviors are established and set within us. And so obviously I believe that people can change. Some people don't believe people can change. I do. I believe that we are capable of change and that we were created to be able to change. So I but, built an entire company off of it. So yeah. Right. Yes. And so, uh, you know, having that growth mindset um, is so important and but we have to first recognize where we are. And a lot of it stems from childhood. What did your parents say? How did they act? A lot of the unspokens too, um, things that weren't said. Uh, and it's interesting though, because maybe someone who grew up, one person who grew up in poverty, they spend all their money because you know they don't know if they'll have it tomorrow. But then another person is very frugal, had the same set of circumstances, but acts very different around money. But they get out of the same story. It's just about how they react to it. Um, neither one is necessarily good. It's just interesting how people react. That's very powerful what you just said. It's just we can have the same set of circumstances but react to it very differently, which what we see so often, it's, you know, and again, it's, I say it's neither good or bad, but it's like, is it giving you the results that you want? Right, right. Now you can ask, is there a single pattern or a single statement or an emotion around money that you see across the board? And this is a oh, very- That's a really good, question. that's a good question. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, where do I stand? Like comparison to my peers. I know I'm so behind or I know, well, how do we look compared to your other clients? So a lot of people ask me that question. Um, and I really do try, I always, I don't try to like straight answer them because I just don't think that's really relevant. It's really about your life and your goals. Are you on track to accomplish them or not? And if not, let's make the changes so that you can do it. But how you come to me is irrelevant because really we just want to change what's going to happen in the future. It's an interesting question. Why do you think they ask? Why do we think we want comparison? to- Comparison. I think comparison is built into human nature. Um, it's toxic, of course. Um, but money comparison is, I mean- so many good things about America, um, but it's one of the negatives, uh, you know, that everything's so much driven around money in America. Um, and two, people can borrow in order to look wealthy, even though they may not be. And so debt, we're very debt driven here. And so that can also force people or not force people, but it can drive people to live beyond their means. And then it looks like they're doing well, but no one really knows except you. And so mm. there's a lot behind it. Um, and honestly, I think that there's a lot of inner healing that people need to have when it comes to money. Amen. And I think <laughs> this is the time for it because normally it's in the difficult times right now. If we're, if we're heading into a, a downturn, economic downturn or anything mm -hmm. like that, 
I think the the all of the people who have been showing off, but they don't have the things to back it up. Like it's going right. to come into a lot of the entrepreneurs. A lot of my former clients yep. came back to taking jobs mm -hmm. because it's like whatever is this is not working. So it's really fast. Right. Um, what who who is the ideal client? The kind of person yeah. that you really love to work with. Yeah. Well, if you wouldn't mind, I'll just share an example of someone that I've worked with recently and kind of share their story. I won't use their names, but um, he works for, they're married, uh, three children, three boys. And so he was referred to me by his coworker. And so most of my business comes from referrals. Um, and so he was working at a Fortune 100 company, big company, um, great position, but they had significantly changed his retirement benefits and his pension plan. And so he was running all these spreadsheets, figuring out what is my retirement going to look like? Mm -hmm. um, and he needed help deciding if he should stay or move to another company and what that actually meant for him financially. And so we did a side by side of his benefits, his wife. Um, is a principal uh, at a school. She was on sabbatical though, in order to finish um, her master's during this time. And so he uh, was looking at another company at a couple offers. And so we did a side-by-side -side financial comparison, both short-term and long-term of what it would look like if he were to change. And then he was able to get a good handle um, on whether or not he should move and what the salary would need to be and what those benefits would need to be in order for him to make the move. Um, meanwhile, his wife was able to stay, you know, finish her dissertation, finish school. And then the awesome thing is that he negotiated so that he could take the summer off with his boys while he was in between jobs. And so he was able to move forward in confidence with his job change. His, it was great because he's more money-minded, his wife is not. And this happens a lot working with couples, right? Um, they're very different. And so I was able to sit down with the both of them and understand what it matters to the both of them and make sure that both of their emotional needs are met when it comes to financial planning. You know, he needed security, he needs a plan. She's more just go with the flow. And so, you know, building in go with the flow planning in your bigger financial plan is so important for her. Um, family is so important to them. So making sure that they could uh, move forward confidently, he could change jobs and they can successfully retire and they want to purchase a property. That's something else that we're working on right now. So a lot of moving parts um, with people who I work with, they're very busy. They have a lot of things going on in their jobs. Um, they're busy people and they serve a lot too in their communities. So um, they know that they need advice to make sure that they're making the right decisions and that it, it makes sense for them and their values. You know, what I heard as you were speaking, it wasn't just advice, financial advice or guidance. It was what came to mind was peace of mind, because what you're mm -hmm. talking about is the quality of life and having a financial conversation and, and looking at the numbers and looking at the comparisons. You can have that peace of mind that you're going to be OK or you can take the summer off or you can take yep. that job or stay in there. That's just, just such a beautiful thing to give to someone. That's right. They get clarity. Clarity is um, kindness, is what uh, Brene Brown says. I love that. I love Brene Brown. Hi, mm -hmm. so, um, Whitney, what is the best way for people to find you and work with you? Is there like um, an introductory call or is there, yeah. how do people get in touch with you? Yep, great question. So you can visit the website, WhitneyWealthGroup.com. Uh, but the process is, uh, if you want to contact us, you can go through the website, you can call me, uh, all of that information is on the website. And what you do from there, we have a first 15 to 20 minute call, just who are you, what are you interested in, would we even be a good fit, right? Because I think uh, we want to make sure that you're comfortable with me, I'm comfortable with you, that we would work well moving forward. After that first call, then we start to gather all of people's data after we finish that financial planning contract and determine the terms of the engagement. Um, engagements are usually about one year contracts uh, that we'll do with people just because a few hours isn't really going to help people with their follow through. Mm -hmm. So, so much of it is the ongoing advice at the very beginning that we can go through and walk through the process. But then 
there are some things they're going to need to do after the fact, and we want to hold them accountable to the things that they said are important for them to accomplish. And so that works throughout the whole year um, for the financial planning process and investment management. I love that and how important it is to hold us accountable because there are a few things like fitness <laughs> or oh, yeah. that we just are not willing to follow through on, right? Like, yeah, we start and then we just give up. So sometimes it's a beautiful thing to have that accountability. Um, mm -hmm. It is really helping ourselves and ensuring that we uh, honor our own word, which is such a, an, another gift that you give. Um, well, folks, uh, Whitney Wealth Group, um, we're going to link this here, 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 and everywhere you find us, you can find us. Um, if you're watching this right now on Facebook, go ahead and check out Whitney's website, but also we're going to be sharing this on YouTube and TikTok and TikTok shorts and stories <laughs> and everywhere else you'll find content that our beautiful Jenna is going to distribute later. Whitney, Thank you so much for the work you do. And also thank you for, for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you for uh, featuring me, Jasna. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, what a pleasure. What an honor. I hope I get to meet you in person soon. Me too. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Sounds good. Bye.